Welcome to the SEM Podcast. I am Don Wayne, joined by Johnny Bottles and Motorhead. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful, Don. How about yourself, guys? Fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> Got a lot of rain here in the uh, Central Virginia area. Under a damn flood watch until a little bit later tonight. So, uh, batting down the hatches. Think we'll be okay, though. Everything good in your world as far as weather, health, whiskey, and wine? Yeah. Can't complain from the far west coast. Been a little warm today, about 88, but not too bad. Not too bad. Johnny? Stormed a little bit here today, and uh, maybe for like 15 minutes. We had two of them blow through, and that was it. Well, God bless. Regular Florida weather. Hot and muggy. Just terrible. We got a nice and sunny out there right now. Looks great. We got a little bit of an interesting show this week. Um, This week in wrestling was kind of weird. Um... I guess I was going to start off with the show today and talk about Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with old Sarge Slaughter. He's uh, one of our Twitter peeps. We love the Sarge, but uh, you can't win every battle, and you probably shouldn't start this one. He's coming after Lacey Evans for a variety of reasons, one being that she's, quote, using his gimmick as an ex-drill instructor. He's also She's also using his Cobra clutch, and, uh, you know, Usually I side with the Sarge on just about anything. But Lacey Evans is an actual ex-Marine veteran. You know, she's not living a gimmick that was her real life. Sergeant Slaughter was living a gimmick. For him to speak out of mouth, speak out of tongue, so to say, and, and come out and come after Lacey Evans, that takes a lot of balls on his part. You know, you're out here with freaking stolen valor calling out a true ex-Marine for using your move. And by the way, I got news for you, Sarge. There ain't but about 15 damn finishing holds that are worth this shit in wrestling. So, yeah, they're all going to get used. The camel clutch became the, the Snyder recliner. The million-dollar dream was also your move. It's all the same shit, just rehashed to a different format. Let's take a look at what he said. All right, we've got this up right now on comicbook.com, which does cover professional wrestling. And uh, just taking a look at it, let me go back into the screen. He talked about her sexualizing her look. Which, yes. come on, dude, like that sells. I got news for you. Any woman that's got an attractiveness in wrestling today is going to sell her sexuality to get herself over. News break, men like sexy women. <laughs> uh, and... Especially nowadays, especially, I mean, you go back to the past, the 70s, you know, 60s, 70s, even parts of the early 80s, you know, the women that were wrestling back then, you know, they were, they just kind of wore like bathing suit type things. Remember the women of glow, the glamorous ladies of wrestling? They had some that were right. kind of sexy looking, but nowadays, Don's right, it's all about that, you know, I know people that will watch wrestling just to watch the girls, and they don't even know a whole lot about the wrestling, but they'll watch the women just because... They like the eye candy. And here's what uh, I guess he's talking about right now. She stole his hat. Oh. If you can yeah. say she stole the hat. And there's the outfit that she's got on. And uh, this is what his daughter, Kelly Remus, who goes by Slaughter Daughter Official, said. If you can hmm. read that Twitter blurb right there, because she debuted a new look on SmackDown. This is not okay. Who do you have to sh- Lacey Evans thinks she is? There and we go on that one. In, I be- yeah. The I, I was always under- I was always under the opinion that if, if you wanted to borrow any type of gimmick or take a gimmick from a retired wrestler, you had to get their blessing. I don't know if that's right. still the same because I know, um, uh, well, for instance, Ronda Rousey, you know, Rowdy Ronda Rousey, Roddy Roddy Piper said, yes, you can use that. Go ahead, use that. And she used yeah, it and flew it really well, you know. But um, she, she, respe- she was respectful of his Very wishes. respectful of it. Yes. I personally, you know, being that she was in the military, um, hats off to her. God bless her. Thank you for her service. But uh, I do have a problem with that. I, mm-hmm. I don't think she should have done it without asking Sergeant Slard. Just my opinion. And, you know, us, us guys in the SCM, we, we all have our opinions, and uh, we don't always agree. But me personally, I thought she should have got the blessing from the Sarge first. Well, that might not have been her call. If you look at the management, 
That could be true. Cool. Vince probably has the attitude. I made Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, he would have been anything without me. I put him yeah. in the national spotlight and the world spotlight for that matter. He probably said, Vince probably said, forget about it. We're not going to do this. And, uh, or even if he even thought of it, oh, do I have to clear this with Sergeant Slaughter? No, I don't have to clear anything with anybody. It's a gimmick he used here. The outfit he wore here. We have the, uh, the uh, I think they still own the intellectual property for Slaughter if they produce the dolls. Isn't he on a Legends contract, Don? Yes, he is. Well, he well, was. I don't know if he is anymore or not. Hmm. That's he a good hasn't question. been in the video games as of late. He hasn't been on any of their DLC content. My son plays the games. I haven't seen him in years. My issue with this whole thing is it's a work, dude. It's a work. None of this is real. Everybody reuses everybody's gimmicks. Do you think Nature Boy Ric Flair went and asked if he could use the other Nature Boy's gimmicks or he just went with it because it fit? Was the American Dream Dusty Rhodes the first American Dream? No, he wasn't. You reuse what works in the wrestling industry. For Sergeant Slaughter to get so butthurt over something so simplistic, so asinine, <laughs> grow the hell up, be a man, congratulate the woman on finding a gimmick, because God knows they've used enough shitty gimmicks on this woman to bury her three times over. Undertaker's got burial sites for her in the backyard for her other gimmicks. He's just chucking them in the grave left and right. So, Sarge, I got news for you, buddy. It's going to happen again. When Lacey Evans is done, there's going to be another drill instructor. The camel clutch will keep getting used. The sleeper will keep getting used. It'll all be brought back around again. Stone Cold Stutter's getting used by RKO. And they by still everybody. call it a stutter. And, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Even that new kid, the new kid they brought up from uh, NXT, Grayson Waller who had his first match on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. He's been using the rolling stunner where you jump. He jumps through the ropes, through the middle rope. That's a pretty neat move the way it looks. You jump through the middle rope and come through, jump up, grab the guy, and a regular stunner move. Yeah, I want to talk Flashy, about that a little bit Flashy, effective, late. but I'm sure he didn't call Stone Cold and say, hey, can I incorporate your Stone Cold stunner in this? Right. Nah. And Cody Rhodes has been using the Cody cutter for how many years now? A lot. And that's the same thing as a uh, Stone Cold Stunner, the Cody Cutter. You guys think it's a respect factor? You think that's one of the main issues is that the older guys, it's 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 out of respect and they feel totally disrespected if somebody doesn't acknowledge them. Who's, who's the guy that uses the razor's edge? I mean, you know, razor's dead now. But there's that a couple was a uh, Damian Priest has used the yeah. razor's edge yeah. on several you occasions. Know? And to me, if, if, if I was a professional wrestler that had wrestled and I retired, I could go both ways on it, but if, if somebody was like trying to do something that, that copied my gimmick in any way, shape, or form, I might have a problem with it. But if they're using my moves, now that's where I feel different about it. I think it's it's a tribute. You know, it's a it's a tribute. It, it's like, oh, that guy's still using a move that I did for years. Right on. That move will live on forever, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but just to just the way I feel about the old school stuff and the old school guys, I and, you know, we don't even know if she's actually blatantly copying him. I mean, it looks like it's, it's his hat, definitely. And it's definitely the same type of gimmick. But, yeah, I I feel they should they should get permission. That's just that's just my just my point of view. They should get permission. Well, if you break it down to what she's wearing, could you say that? Remember a guy named Del Wilkes? Yep. He Patriot. Used to be the Patriot. But he was also he started out as the trooper. Yeah. The AWA. Where at the end of the match, we put his hat, like like what Slaughter wears, what she's wearing right now. He would put that hat on, which is a state trooper's hat, and write the guy a ticket and shove it in his mouth and leave the <laughs> ring. The guy he just beat. Is he stealing Sergeant Slaughter's gimmick by wearing the same hat as Slaughter back then? No, of course not. No, not, not that uh, It's one. a respect it's thing not. for Slaughter. The old generation does business a certain way. And a lot of those principles and the way they did business back then don't apply today in the world of corporate wrestling. Territories, yes. Corporate wrestling, no. You could say back in the day with Wrestler's Court, back in the <clears throat> mid-2000s, early 2000s, the way they did business back then, they talked to guys about moves, sharing moves. Hey, don't do the burning hammer anymore. That's my move. Don't do this. Uh, the DDT, I use that. Um, they used to, some of that was going on in the locker room back then. 
in WWE and the and WCW. However, that's all out the window now. It's totally corporate, totally, totally run by agents, producers, CEOs, COOs, CFOs, and uh, it's a totally different world that Slaughter's used to. I'd chalk it up as to either to that or Don. What do you think of this? He's trying to work a gimmick to get his daughter in the WWE for a match. What See, and I think that's the bottom line on this whole thing is he's he's making a huge fuss over it to get his daughter some publicity. I just don't think this is the right way to go about it by talking about gimmick infringement. If he was still in the company as an active wrestler, all right, now we got a problem. But we're talking about somebody that actually served the country. We're not talking about somebody. She's living her real-life gimmick. And I know I've heard Steve Austin talk about it a lot. Steve Austin was Steve Austin turned up to level 10 versus level 6. All he did was amplify who he was as a person. Sergeant Slaughter was living a complete fake gimmick that was made up by McMahon that act, that took him to a level he could have never had otherwise. For him to say some of this stuff, yeah, I feel like a lot of it is him trying to push over a narrative for his daughter. But at the same time, check yourself at the door, Sarge. Talk about a period at the end of a sentence. Right there, he's right. The guy never was in the service. And the dawn and, is um, spoken. Mm-hmm. Right. So oh, we got next, Don. I, what's that? What do you got next, Don? Motor, I know you told me you watched Raw this week. I'm real curious to hear what you thought about it because, you know, I'll say this much. It opened up with Cody Rhodes, correct? That was the first segment. Cody yes. Rhodes came out and yeah. he fought Brock Lesnar tooth and nail. And from there on, I said, okay, we got a show. We might have a show here today, boys. He's not getting the tail kicked out of him right now. He's not getting shit canned. There's no ambulance. He's fighting back, and we might have a slobber knocker on our hands, to quote old JR. Well, uh, started out great, in my opinion. Uh, excellent match. Can't, can't, really can't argue with it there. You know, the more I've been watching Raw, uh, the more I'm starting to kind of see and get a feel for, you know, everything that's laid out and, and how they're doing it. But as to me, as, as the whole show progressed, are you talking about the, the main event match, Don? Well, just what were some of your highlights from what you saw? Like, to me personally, the Shayna Baszler coming out and just absolutely annihilating Ronda Rousey. That was the show, right? Because they all do run together. Like, some yeah, sort of a that was the show. Yeah. But that Ronda was. Rousey, finally Shayna Baszler came out and had her shut up bitch moment and buried Ronda Rousey in the middle of the ring. Undertaker's got a lot of plots out back, fellas. He's going to start burying a lot of these people. He's got gimmicks right. back there. He's got bad wrestling. He's got it all in his backyard. And Ronda Rousey, from what I hear, her contract's up, and she's about to take the next six feet under dirt nap in her wrestling career. So what she's else out after, she? She's out after SummerSlam. Right. Yeah, and she's probably going to put over Shayna Baszler on her way out the I door. Thought that the, that match with Rousey, I, I, it was something that I've been waiting to see for a while, and just you mean the segment, right? Yes, yeah, and um, I think whoever's you guys, you guys don't think that that Triple H is completely taking control of the booking, right? Yeah, hell no. Yeah, so who's and I don't think Vince did this. You see I what think, I'm saying? I, I think that Triple H does have control of the booking. However, Vince from afar chimes in through Zoom and through text messages and FaceTime calls. Hey, pal. What he wants done. An example of that was the was the Raw a week ago. Yeah. Where he rewrote like the first half of the show. And SmackDown was rewritten Friday because Vince was in Madison Square Garden. He was there live. And the uh, right. Bloodline segment ran along, but we'll talk about SmackDown later. Anyway, Vince does have his fingers in the booking. Maybe that could have, could have, would have been a poor choice of words. Vince, Vince does have some kind of control over the booking. And Triple H, eh, okay, no problem. What they do now, I heard, is they announce matches a week in advance because you would never see that. You would never see matches being announced a week in advance because Vince just tears scripts up and writes it all on the fly. He's got, like, bullet points he wants to hit in a show, who he wants yeah. out there, and he writes it as it goes along. And they did that several times. A lot of people don't realize that. He'll roll in at 6 o'clock and look at the script say, this is shit. Pal, <laughs> this is shit, pal. <laughs> Where's Pritchard at? 
Come on, where are they at? I can't tell. We'll put the shoe together. <laughs> Tear it up. Redo it. Even rewriting the last hour of the show while the first hour is being televised. So Correct. It's, but they have a way of controlling that now by announcing matches in advance where he can't he can't go ahead. And I know they say cards subject to change. They've been saying that ever since wrestling's been a right. sport, you know, an entertainment. But he can't change everything. <clears throat> They've announced a lot of matches on Raw for next week. And they announced a lot of matches for SmackDown coming up. And NXT also, but that's neither here nor that's Shawn Michaels thing. Vince doesn't touch NXT. Well, he better. But not. I think who's, here's the question to you two after seeing that segment who's the face and who's the heel? Is Baszler a face or she is the heel in the, in the whole? Field? I wouldn't call her the face either. I, you know, that was it's it's still hard to decipher in a lot of the matches. Um, some of it's clear cut, but that one itself, because, you know, Rousey still has a whole bunch of fans, so does Baszler. So the, if, if you if you match booze to yays, it was kind of all equal all the way across the board, in my opinion. The match itself, though, I thought was wonderful. I thought it was perfect because Rousey got what she deserved, you know. And you like mean, you mean the saying, segment, it wasn't it wasn't an official match. It was a segment. Yeah, the the, the segment of brawl, correct. Brawl, correct. Whatever they had. Yeah. yeah, the match is SummerSlam. Yeah, they'll come back, but it's uh, I thought it was great. Um, I really can't complain about it. To me, the, the Raw is getting steadily. In my opinion, because I stopped watching it for a long time because of stuff that was going on that I just didn't jive with. And I, I just mm-hmm. couldn't understand. Well, now that they seemingly either I'm opening my mind a little more to it or they're starting to do some stuff that's hitting some triggers in my brain and say, hey, this is all right. Don, what do you think? So you're asking about which one's the face and which one's the heel. And it's kind of a weird quandary. And, and here's why. Baszler was the heel after the last you know, premium live event where she turned on her partner. Like Mm -hmm. she should automatically be the heel in this entire endeavor. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the WWF fan, WWF, good Lord, I'm telling my age, WWE fan base has gotten so tired and so worn out on Ronda Rousey that she's becoming the face and she shouldn't be. Ronda Rousey by default has become the heel because how can I miss you if you don't go away? She's been around for years now. And she was a draw before because she was around every couple of, you know, big pay-per-views. She'd just drop in real quick. Now she's been there for two solid years. The crowd base is kind of tired of her. You can tell she kind of needs a break. When this whole thing broke down, I thought, well, Baszler's got to be the the heel now, right? When she came out, that wasn't a heel promo she cut. That was a babyface promo. And and that was it. I mean, we're off and running now. I'm looking forward to SummerSlam. So far, the build has been pretty good. Johnny, do you have the um, what the ratings were for that show on Monday night? I think it was like 1.8. Or was it 1.6? 1. 1.78. 1. Yeah, so that show one eight. I don't have any quarter hours on that, but it was 1.78, which is... And isn't that up from last week? I think it was 1.5 last week, yeah. So it is up from last week. Uh, it depended upon the competition they had last week. Who knows? A uh, quarter of a million people is what it added up to. Uh, what they gained this week, which is a good thing. Um, I would love to see them them line things up more for SummerSlam. You get a little taste. You're getting the tip of the iceberg right now for the matches that they're going to have. I mm-hmm. wouldn't be surprised if you see – well, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to see Baszler and Rousey. I wouldn't be supply, surprised if the Judgment Day explodes after this Raw and Balor and Priest have a match. At SummerSlam. Who knows? Uh, that's the way Raw went off the air, if you recall. It feels like they're building to the Balor-Priest fight for the uh, briefcase. I feel like Balor's always been the odd man out in that group. I'm not sure you'll see it. I agree. The, agree. I, I don't think you'll see an end to that team. What I think you might see is some unknown commodity join that team that we don't know is there yet. Maybe the Braun Breaker kid comes up and that's his way to get in there with an over team to give him a mega push to superstar him. Cause when he comes into the next level, it's going to be big. I don't know how many yes, people saw that Rollins match, but the kid proved he's got the gusto to get in there. And he's definitely got a set of chops. 1.8 million. I wanted to talk about this for a minute. Cause we're going to get an AEW, I think next. And they of course did their average 855 K. That's what they do. Wednesday night on AEW does 855 K. And I wanted to touch on this for one reason. 
All I heard about from the uh, diehards and the AEW fan base was, well, the NHL and the NBA playoffs are going on. And as soon as that's over, we're going to get our numbers back up there. I got news for you. Your number is your number. The people that watch those sports are AEW fans. You have more of a chance of them going to WWF or WWE than you do coming to AEW. It's shown historically that when Monday Night Football is on, the WWE fan base goes down a little. Not a lot. Because people, a lot of people that watch AEW, the majority don't watch sports. This is their sport. This is what they watch. And if you watch Wednesday night, suck my ass. That was awful. You got a good point about that. You got a not sucking your ass, of course. You've got a good, <laughs> you've got, you've got a good point about uh, what you said about what the diehard AEW fans watch. They don't watch regular sports. That is their sport. And, uh, this is going to be a good show already, I can tell, because we're not even halfway into it, and we already got one suck my ass from Dawn. So I'm really looking forward to the, the next half hour here, guys. <laughs> Dude, when we went on the air, he came in hot. So yeah, he, yeah. He, was, he was coming in quick. But um, yeah. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what we're looking at is, is the casual viewers who watch, and Don will agree, because he, he studies this kind of bullshit, the casual viewers watch – Football and wrestling. When football's on a uh, commercial break, they switch over to their wrestling program that they're recording at the time just to see what's going on, keep their hand in. They've been doing it for 30, 40 years. You're right. And the AEW kids don't do that. That's that 855,000 group that they're part. They're a part of. So when Monday Night Football starts up, well, if football starts up on Wednesdays, ESPN or whatever, whatever avenue, it's whatever outlet it's on. Some of those people are going to be shaved off, maybe a quarter of a million, maybe 125,000, because they're DVRing it. And the DVR numbers don't affect anything because the advertisers don't care about DVR numbers for ratings purposes because you can skip through the commercials. You'll fast forward through them. So the DVR ratings are of no use to any advertiser. Number one advertiser. Advertiser, I found out today on television. What do you think it is? What company is the number one advertiser? Brand or company? And you've got this company advertising on your show. Brand or You're company? You charge them a premium price because they pay it. Brand or company? It's a company, not a brand. They have several brands. They own several, several, several brands. I that guess you have in your house right now. I'd guess Coca Cola's one. But That's what I guess. It's going to be big soda, uh, big. Conglomerate fast food? No, no, it's a conglomerate, of course, but it's not not anything. No food items. Procter and Gamble. Yeah, oh, so, really? Yes, they spend uh, ninety-five billion dollars a year on advertising. Wow! On television advertising, can you imagine that? Can you imagine the money they make? It's phenomenal. But so did did either one of you watch this Wednesday debacle? Cause I started it on the DVR the next day and I couldn't get past the first 20 minutes of it. I said, I'm going to fast forward this. If anything catches my, I'll stop. And I found myself 20 minutes later at the end of the show. And it, it looked awful. The numbers, I don't even know what they were other than the 855. It looked like a train wreck from start to finish. When Jericho I, came out, when Jericho came out and with Don Callis, I fell asleep. That's how exciting yep. the show was. Yes, sir. That was and that wasn't alcohol related. Thing. Motor, you did well, the same thing. Same thing. As soon as he came out, I was like, "Oh no, that's it, that's it." I I did not continue to watch the rest of it. I knew where it was going to go, and I didn't want to waste my time or the rest of the time that I had for the day trying to follow and watch something that I just didn't really give a rat's ass about. So, yeah, no, I I didn't watch. I, about about the same guys. First twenty minutes or so, maybe half hour, and that was it. Done. What was your most memorable moment from that show? Uh, when my wife brought me a tall beer. That, <laughs> when Mrs. Motor did a run-in with a beer. She did there a run-in with a tall beer, and that was that was about it for me, guys. I really can't comment on anything else about it. Uh, Don, my takeaway from that show, comment. Don and Motor. My, my takeaway was I can't believe Adam Cole actually lifted a barbell. Boy, he needs to. <laughs> Spaghetti arm Adam Cole lifted barbells. He lifted weights. I it can't believe that. And I can't believe that Ruby Soho can't keep her tongue in her mouth. Every photo they have of her in the graphics, when she comes to the ring, she pins somebody. 
Her tongue is always out of her mouth. Not uh-huh. a good look, Ruby. Keep it shut. That's her gimmick, man. Gimmick, dude. And- what kind of gimmick is that? Apparently, a porn star. <laughs> well, well, she used yeah. to. Be, you know what her? You know what her indie name was years ago? Heidi Lovelace. I am not like surprised. Linda Lovelace. Heidi. I am Lovelace. not surprised. Yes. Heidi Lovelace. Yes. A tribute to the great Linda Lovelace. Well, that's 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 sure. wonderful. Wonderful. So. On to the next area that I was looking at this week. We had some big history pop up this week. 27 years ago from, I think, Thursday or Wednesday, history was made and the NWO was formed. And the biggest heel turn to this day I've ever seen occurred when Hulk Hogan walked down the aisle with Bobby Heenan screaming, who's he here for? And Dusty Rhodes popping up with, who's bad now, boys? And me, a few months out of joining the service, watching through scribbly lines on my cable box, because God knows my pops wasn't getting that pay-per-view. That shit didn't happen. You better figure out what's going on in between them lines, son, and figure it out, because the the volume was wide open. I could hear everything. It was like a 1930s baseball game. I could hear the (laughs) play-by-play, and I had to form it in my own mind. But by God, when he said, Hogan dropped the leg! I lost my mind, came unglued, ran around my living room. I was eight years old again. I am not going to watch that live. Oh, yes. I remember when that happened live. And I I believe I still have it on tape somewhere when I recorded it. And I was in college at the time. I just started. So, yeah, VHS tape, man. Our old TV. Remember the TVs that had the VHS thing in the bottom of the TV? I had one of those guys when I was in college, and I started watching uh, Nitro. Or uh, and um, I saw Hogan come out, and all this time I kept thinking, "Man, he's still going to pull it. He's still going to pull that. He's still going to be the Hulkster." And then all of a sudden, I just felt it. I felt it. I'm like, "Uh oh, okay, wait a second. And then I started thinking in my brain, like, "You know what wrestling needs right now is a shot in the ass like Hogan going heel." And he freaking did it. And he had two of the he couldn't have picked two other guys to go in cahoots with to start the NWO. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. I mean, come on. You got the original bad guy, and they had Diesel slash everything else that he was. But that was one of the moments that right then and there, I became another – I started watching wrestling religiously again. I still watched it, but not like I did. After that moment, it was on like Donkey Kong. Every damn week, magazines, the whole night. And then when they started the NWO, that was – Freaking awesome. Awesome. To this day, to, to me personally, it's still, it, 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 if not the greatest faction ever put together, it's, 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 it's in the top two or three, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Do you know that they had a backup plan in case Hogan decided not to do it? I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week, that Hogan stayed at Bischoff's house all weekend while Bischoff and Sullivan were trying to talk him into turning heel and he even slept on the couch over at bischoff's house hey Kate, hold and on. was johnny i just yeah. read the book it was actually at sullivan's house sullivan trapped him at his house and wouldn't let him leave really <laughs> yes cool yeah the taskmaster got him <laughs> if, if hogan didn't want to do it who's their backup plan that sting. night sting, sting was, was the, the backup, backup was guy. it really sting, sting or was, was? sting was going to turn heel and Sting's never turned heel. Never. Never. Oh, well, like, he did. Wait, he did turn he did. heel. In he TNA, did turn he turned heel. heel. Yep, that's yes. right. Very briefly turned heel. That's right. That's right. To me, later on, he was more of a rogue. You know, kind of the in-between guy just showed up when he, especially when he started dropping the Raptors. But I had no idea that Stinger was going to be the next guy if Hogan said no. That's, that's good Sting, fodder right there. Sting was the guy. If you go to sportsillustrated.com, they had an, art, uh, an article about that on the 7th, written by Justin Barrasso, who is a wrestling aficionado. I've seen his byline in several websites where they talk about, and I'll just fast forward through this, this is a lot of what we were talking about. There's the interview with Gene uh, Oker. Let me, let, let's run a little. Faction, Steve Austin and, and you know the NWO that haven't wrestled full time in over 20 years is still your top selling merchandise. It says a lot about what's become of professional wrestling today. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Well, who had a bigger impact, Hogan or Steve Austin? Or is that a topic for another day? We got it. That's a, a whole other rabbit hole. That's a whole other show we could do. We could do that a is a whole. We, we could talk yeah. a whole show on that one, guys. Right, right. And did you know? I just went perusing this article before we went on the air. Nash said that was the first match that they've ever had, Nash and Hall, since they signed with WCW. They did run-ins, they did interviews, they did schmazes, they uh, assaulted people in a you know backstage or in the ring. They never actually worked a uh, uh, a true match until that night. Yeah, and, that's what they were saving them for was that big debut on that uh, pay per view. I mean, that's what they were they were yeah. built, all building to that. And after that, you know. It probably is. It's top two faction all time, right? Like the debate's going to be to me. It's going to be the Four Horsemen or the NWO because you know yeah. there's some fans of DX, but they didn't have the kind of impact that the NWO and the Four Horsemen had. To me, those are the two factions that you get down to in wrestling history, and it's up to the you know your generation, I guess, which one you like more. To me, I always felt like the Four Horsemen. They were the first big faction to set the example. They sort of started it all, and everybody else after that was sort of pretending. The NWO felt original. It felt like a true original faction. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, I love the fact that they, they they morphed, they changed, they split off the, with the two factions, the black and white, the black and red. I thought that was brilliant. You know, I really did. That was uh, – and talk about a way to use your personnel um, and you, the fact that they'd mix – Pretty much all the old school guys together. Uh, some of them had their same persona. Some of them had them changed. Man, that was that was insane. And uh, when they split off and did the, the the black and red, I thought that was great. Then they fought against each other sometimes, you know. So that and it, it was a sign of the times. Uh, Attitude era was right there, you know. It, it was all coming to a head with the way wrestling was at that point, and it worked. It worked wonderfully. Mm -hmm. it, there's no other way you could have done it, I think. And at that time, like I said earlier, wrestling needed that shot. It really did need it. Like nowadays, well, what could you possibly do? What could you possibly do now to even emulate something like that? Bullet Club? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, there is no way. Because I've read, seen some of these people on Twitter, all oh, the Bullet Club's 10 times better than the NWO. Oh, it is? Really? Uh, I, I don't think so, kid. But th there's nothing you could do now or even in the last 10 years that could emulate that moment and how it changed wrestling. You got a good point there. You got a very good point. Shout out to Larry the Hitman from the SCM, the Square Circle Maniacs. He said, Larry. me and my friends are losing it. GD Minds. And Swing a beer we've got for Larry. A Swing a beer for the working man, Larry the Hitman. Larry the Hitman. Cheers, brother. Larry and Brett Favre can suck my ass. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh there's two suck my asses. We're on a roll. That a boy dog. Let's Keep give going. a shout out to the balling boys. Balling boys, we see you, we hear you. There's a shout out. So well, I'm brothers, you guys watch Thanks SmackDown this us. week. Ready to talk SmackDown, ready to talk Roman Reigns. I was hyped for this shit. I don't care that it went 40 minutes. I love this show. A plus. I was hooked from start to finish. I couldn't wait to see where it went. Bottles, I know you watched it. What'd you think? I thought it was fantastic. My man. I thought it was fantastic. I think they did a 2.5 or a 2.75. Nice. Two million, two million and three quarters of a million What people watch that show. And uh, I think they're going to hit three million when it, it, the whole thing finally goes down. And it hasn't gone down yet. There's a guy that's going to pop soon, Solo Sokoa. If you watch the show. I did. They tense a lot. They, 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 they're, they're, um, foreshadowing a lot of tension with Solo Sokoa. A lot of tension. Ah, uh, when he took the microphone away from Heyman, dropped it outside the ring, when uh, he picked up the Tribal Chief's uh, uh, lay and looked at it, was he going to put it on? That's what everybody was saying. People were going crazy. It's cinematic wrestling is what it is. It's a little... I can't, it, it's, it's better than the old days, but it's also a throwback to the old days of angles in the ring. 
this the whole angle, like I said weeks ago, the whole angle's got uh, Paul Heyman's fingerprints all over it. You know he's oh, writing yeah. this, he's booking this. The guy's a freaking genius. But you can't let him – they found that you can't let him book a whole show because – He's got to pump his brakes from time to time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You can't blow your whole load. Pardon me, YouTube censors, for, uh, you know, <laughs> on, on an entire show with giving everybody an angle. You're going to be like Vince Russo having all these hot button, these, these, these hot shotting angles. Look, bro. The show. It's just wrestling, bro. It's wrestling, bro. Come on, bro. He, he, this Jim is Cornette's good, favorite guy. He's a good idea, man. I will say that. He found something for everybody. That's a show for another time. The impact that Vince Russo had on the wrestling business. Good and when bad. he was booking yeah, when he was booking WWE during the Attitude Era. Everyone had a spotlight. Everyone from Viscera to Hardcore Holly to Crash Holly to China to Triple H to Austin to um um Undertaker to even uh, the low level guys in the Ministry of Darkness that the Undertaker ran. What were their names? I'm trying to think of the guy. Midian. Midian. Even Midian, Midian had a gimmick. Well, Midian that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Midian. Yes, Midian. Hey, didn't Vince Russo also come up with the birth of the hand gimmick? That. Look at the good dog. Yes, he did. That's the one that did it for me. That is the one that I was like, and I tell you, I'll tell you guys the truth. Right around there is, is when I stopped watching WWF, WWE, WWF. I stopped watching it because of that. I was like, she just gave birth to a plastic hand. And people were like, what? I, I didn't know what to say. I, I had no idea what to say. It's like Jerry Springer met like, you know, that show, The Oddities back in the 70s, all the freaks from the circus and stuff. I got completely turned off by that. And I knew later on Vince Russo, he was the one, like the mastermind behind that. And uh, well, Jerry, Springer first, was, Jerry Springer was Vince a hot Russo shoot back then. Suck my ass, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Springer was a hot show back then. And he wanted, he openly said in interviews that his goal was to emulate that show and won WWE programming. Mark Henry was signed to a million dollar a year contract. Because he was an Olympic strongman, Mark Henry. He was signed to a million dollar a year contract and uh, he was making big money. And they didn't want to pay him because he just, it, it took him a while to get it. He didn't catch on like Kurt Angle did. So they tried to make him quit by putting him in, in an angle where he was uh, having an affair with Mae Young, 89 year old Mae Young. Oh, I remember that entire oh, shit show was. of an angle. The whole thing is like a bad damn memory. <sighs> Like indigestion, well, bad pizza, man. Agreed. You can't make it go away. Yep. Agreed. When you look at your pizza, it's got pepperoni nipples. That's right. That's Which, right. By the way, we'll get to that in a minute. Do you hear that bullshit? <laughs> My God. Anyway, back to the SmackDown <laughs> show. So, you know, Roman Reigns, perfect nut shot. What a what a heel. I love it, man. Roman Reigns is healing it up. Grayson Waller. I didn't know much about him until this week. Good. He's got the chops. The guy can talk. The guy can wrestle. I've got to ask, though, what is the deal with every time the WWE introduces a new wrestler, they lose? Why is this always the thing with this company? You, you got your brand new talent that you put in the ring and feed him to Edge. Why? He's hated by so many people with his gimmick that he really doesn't need to win. He could lose. And still, he's still hated by all. He's still a good heel. So, Johnny, I'll say uh, this. With, with, with that gimmick. I'll say this. You watch a lot more current product like the NXT stuff than me and, say, Motorhead does, right? You know who he is. I yeah, don't I do. know who this kid is, man. He's new to me. I've only heard he's his name a few times, uh, basically from other, uh, you know, podcasts and such and talk shows but same uh i i don't watch it as much as you do uh and uh I, i've heard of his name and i've seen him i know what he looks like i can recognize him out of a police lineup 
but I don't know anything else, anything else about them, you know, and that's just because I don't watch a lot of new product. You tell us, Johnny, is he the next big thing? He's the next big thing, believe it or not. But I'll tell you why. He looks good. He's young. He can talk. He can wrestle. And he knows how to push your buttons and get you to hate him. When, he's, when you first saw him on SmackDown for the first two weeks, you could tell he was nervous. He's never been in front of a crowd that big before. Never. With NXT, never. They've got maybe 400 people in that little auditorium or whatever it is. I've never been there. I really couldn't tell you what the Capitol Wrestling Center, how many people with seats. That's what it's called, the Capitol Wrestling Center. Um, he's very good at uh, He's very good at interviews. He's very good. He presents himself well, and that's what they look for. He's the kind of guy, he's um, he's another. He's the second coming of Miz. If you look at him in that respect, that's oh. his ceiling, the Miz ceiling. He's a guy that can sit out to do interviews for radio, for media, for TV. They can send him to the ESPY Awards. They can send him anywhere, and he'll be able to talk. He can hold his own with anybody, and he proved that with Edge. He proved it with uh, Charlotte Flair, Asuka. He, who else did he interview? AJ Styles. Did, wasn't he the one that came out at the uh, Money in the Bank with uh, John Cena? With Cena. And he ambushed Cena. He jumped Cena from behind. Yes. They have a lot of faith in that kid. And I would say even more so than Breaker because. Wow. Really? Waller's up and Breaker's down. Breaker's still in NXT. Breaker's in NXT because. Uh, and that surprises the hell out of me. They got to get that kid up there, man. I swear. He's got Steiner blood in him. They got to get him face. up there. But Motor, he was a face when he started. Everybody loved him. And then his father, his father did a, a wrestling convention. Yeah, let's not that. get into that. Let's not get into that. That's a, that's a podcast for another I, I don't any, even want to get rate. into that shit because I wasn't there. And I don't they, know what happened. He wrestled like a face. And they want to see if he could work as a heel. Like Big Papa Pump, his uncle. And he can work as a heel. They want to find two. They want to polish the roughness off of his heel work. And who knows, when he comes up, is he going to be a heel? Is he going to be a face? Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? So, Johnny, you said something to me earlier this week, and I've been thinking hard about it, and I think you're on to something here. So, John Cena came out at, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, and we didn't cover on this a whole lot, and was talking about bringing WrestleMania to England. Now, this is something that if you follow John Cena's career, you know he's been talking about having the WrestleMania in England for the longest time. He wants to take WrestleMania overseas. He wants to go to England or Spain or somewhere where they've got a huge following. That's when, you know, the Grayson Waller kid comes out. And funny enough, weird coincidence, hear me out on this. The next day, AEW's August show magically sells 10,000 tickets exactly. Magically. Magic. For Wembley Wembley Stadium. For Wembley Stadium. You got to say where it was. It was in England, Wembley Stadium, the all-in show. Magically sells 10,000 tickets. Look, man, I'm trying to get behind the AEW product, but I'm calling bullshit on that. Tony Khan's buying his tickets, and he's giving them away like he did in Las Vegas, where if you buy a burger, you get a free ticket to the show. He's doing all he can to make sure he gets as many people on that show as he can. And he's the, I'm convinced he's buying the tickets. You didn't get 10,000 AEW fans from the WWE being in your town the week or the night before. The night before. Are you trying to, are you shitting me, man? It's just, you you know he's buying the tickets. You know he's oh, buying yeah. the tickets. Oh, without it, he's no. going to redistribute them at a lower cost. I think right now, I think the uh, the ticket sales, I think it's $54 a ticket which is dirt cheap for, for an event like that. Whereas if you buy a WrestleMania ticket, $200, $300 for a package. Let me show you right now. This is courtesy of, I'm going to share my screen, fellas. And I'm going to show you the latest from WrestleNomics on Twitter. If you're not familiar with WrestleNomics. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a great Twitter account. Yes. Uh, a lot of this stuff is behind a Patreon paywall by people who do subscribe. Pay the five dollars a month for uh, Patreon access to WrestleNomics. They post the quarter hours, the ratings, things like this, the money that's made on T-shirts. They post it to Twitter, 
And uh, this has actually been released by the Re- WrestleNomics Twitter account. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you blow it up. Let me see In I fact, it it's up. so bright, I got to wear shades, man. Oh, dear God. There we go. Estimated Looking tickets good. distributed for just one show, AEW Collision. First one was 9,280 in Chicago for Punk. Toronto, 6,358. Hamilton, Ontario did 38. The show they just had Saturday night, 2,474. That's how many wow. people went to go see it. So here's Hartford, my question, Connecticut. Though, Bottles. You saw the show Saturday night, right? You saw the show? Oh, I watched it. Yeah, it was a good show. There were way more people in that building than that, than that number. No, 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 no. They moved them all facing the hard camera. Okay, so they did some flash photography. Oh, they do it all the time. They've done so many times before. Yep. All the time. Motor knows they do it all the time. They all the tri- time. They, and even the, w, the WWE even does that too. What they have poor, t- well, years ago when they had poor attendance, they'd move everybody over to the other side and uh, just to make it look good. No one on the hard cams. When you see people in the AEW ring doing a promo to the hard camera, looking at the viewer, there's no one over there but no, a cameraman. I've seen those pictures. Yeah, I've seen a couple those. security guards. That's it. That's all you see. And it's a good thing because if you got a nosebleed seat for AEW collision sitting in the rafters, they'll pull you down from there and sit you in a front row somewhere. You know, that's win-win, kind of cool win-win for the thing. people that are there. Yeah, if you're a ticket paying customer, and you're like, oh man, we got to sit all the way up here. And pretty soon here comes the usher, like, hey, why don't you come down here and hang out? I'd be like, all right, you know. Here's something from Larry. Larry the Hitman's back. All those attributes bottled just rattled out, rattled off is the exact reason Grayson Waller will fail in WWE. As crazy as it sounds, it's just what they do. So Larry thinks, thing, Larry. Larry thinks that they're going to mishandle Grayson Waller, a talented kid. And that's so now possible. He's exactly. he's, mishandled so many others. You cannot not, start the guy. If you're going to build him, build him. But you can't keep making these guys lose in their opening matches, man. You've got, you can't have 50-50 booking and have a star. And I wanted to get into that because Collision was next. I figured we'd talk about that. I know you watched it. I'm not going to bullshit you. That is the best show they've had in AEW now in probably three or four weeks. That show without, was amazing. No. CM Punk came out, gave a strong opening promo. I was ready to watch it. There were points in there that I, I couldn't stand. Hobbs, I swear to God, somebody give my man a point of direction because it's QT Marshall's good, QT Marshall's bad. I don't know what the shit they're doing with that guy, but I know he's got charisma. I know he's a big dude that looks like he could beat the hell out of me. I don't yeah. get that. The women's match got canceled because the female, the woman got hurt in Japan a week ago. So here's an idea, Tony Khan. Stop letting your wrestlers work the indie scene if you want them on your TV. Just call me crazy. Maybe not do that shit. Um, is back on TV. Did you know Dewdrop was in AEW? I didn't even know you left WWE. Dewdrop's not AEW. Who the hell that is, Don. Exactly. Most people don't. She was in the WWE. I don't know who that is. Who the hell is that? She, Dewdrop's not in AEW. That was Bambi Hall. She sure as hell looks like Dewdrop. <laughs> she me. looked like Dewdrop. She was Bambi. Dewdrop. Who the hell's Bambi Hall? <laughs> Bambi Hall. Bambi Hall is a second generation Canadian wrestler. She was a jobber they brought in, and they made it seem like she was going to do something. Oh, that's Bambi Hall. She's a second generation wrestler. Blah blah blah. It's it's nice that they actually gave a little background to who. See, just, and that you know, who the jobber was in the ring. So Hang many people. Second. Yeah, go ahead. You got a phone call from Vince? No, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Mrs. 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 Wayne. <laughs> you can get come get your husband. He's losing his mind on this podcast. I swear, I thought that was Dewdrop when I saw it. I. That wasn't Dewdrop, dude. I was excited. What? I was like, oh, shit, you found a home. Go ahead and get it, Big Cakes. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Dewdrop is unfortunately one of those that uh, they have nothing for. They can't figure out what to do with her right now. Different look. They just got to uh, They got to bring her in as a killer. She shouldn't be losing to Nikki Cross. She shouldn't be losing to Zelina Vega. She should be a killer when she comes. She's what, 250 pounds? She's a big girl. 
She's got cake. She's a big girl. Well, she can move, too. She's that is a very big agile. Girl. Yeah, she's very agile. She, they should girl. book her like a female Big Van Vader is how they should book her. Well, they're not going to do that. No. And then I'll that. watch the FTR match, which anytime you're watching FTR, you know you're going to get a quality match. You know uh, FTR on the screen, you're going to get a quality match. And I'm going to say something now about Jay Lethal. I had never heard of Jay Lethal when he came on to AEW. I didn't know who the hell he was. Jay I saw Lethal. the internet nonsense about him, about him being in Japan, and he was the next big star. I didn't know shit about You're him. You're talking about Switchblade Jay White. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Jay White. Sorry. Jay White. Sorry. Yeah. Like I said, I'm still getting to know, homie. I didn't know who the hell he was. But when he was on AEW Dynamite, that guy was literally drowning in nonsense. They had no direction for that kid. They didn't know what to do with him. He's been on collision now for what, since it opened. After the match with FTR, he came backstage and cut a promo on FTR that I think caught FTR off guard because they were both gassed. They just had a hell of a match, cuts a promo on him and walks out, and they were dumbfounded on what to say next. I was applauding in my chair. Way to go, very, buddy. Very old uh, school Very old schoolish. Yeah. Um, um, Jay White. Everyone was uh, very uh, – they say he was going to be a game changer when he got signed to AEW. That's they can't understand how it. WWE passed on him. And WWE was talking to Jay White. He could have been there. But AEW was just throwing that money around. And they're not going to – it's a business. They have, they have business. way too many people on that roster, way too many people that no one knows anything about, unless you're one of the AEW neckbeards basement dwellers that watch that crap all the time. Nobody knows who these people are. And even some of the matches that I tried to watch, you know, with people that I did know, then they, they announced some other guy, hey, here comes, you know, Roy Hallis from, you know, Canuda Tire in Willits, California. It's like, who the hell is this guy? You know, and I, I know the indie fans know who it is, but this is a problem I think that AEW has. When we grew up watching wrestling, if you didn't know the person, you quickly did. Via magazine, via you know TV show, via Saturday nights, whatever, you knew who they were eventually, and they stuck around for a while. AEW's got this rotating roster, it seems, of guys they put out. Then they shelve for months. You don't ever see again. Then all of a sudden they try to put them in a storyline, and it goes nowhere. It's like, well, now everybody should know this person, and some of the fans are like, yeah. And even when they pan the crowd, there's some people looking at each other going. Who, who the hell is that? You know what I mean? It's That is one of the biggest problems they have, I believe. Collision exactly itself, what you're saying. Though, like exactly. What's that? Exactly what you're saying is Scorpio Sky. Scorpio Sky was one half of the in inaugural, initial tag champs for AEW. He got hurt. He got better. He had his first match in 2023, this Saturday night on Collision. Jeez. And who did he He's run? a talented kid. Yep. And, and who did he wrestle? Andretti. Yeah. Action Andretti, who is no one. I'm sorry to say. Who is nobody? They, Jericho hey. went to make him a star, and Jericho wrestled him a couple of times. He interacted with the JAS. He was on um, Elevation, Dark Elevation, you know, their YouTube shows that they got rid of. They threw him on Rampage once or twice. Hasn't done anything of any merit whatsoever on AEW programming. And he gave Scorpio Sky a nice match. It was good. Scorpio Back Sky to what Dawn was, was saying, Collision is definitely the best thing they got going for them right now. And I love the, the beginning, how they look like the old Saturday Night's made event promos. That's what got me hooked from it before. And I'm going to be a Collision fan until it collides and goes with AEW typical booking. And I hope it doesn't go there. And I don't think with the personnel they have now, it's going to go there. But Dawn, exactly right. Collision is a, is a damn fine program so far. Swig a beer to Jason. He watched this time for the first time. He enjoyed it. Hey, right on, Jace. Samoa Joe and the CM Punk match was pretty good. I mean, it's not going to – it's it's a good wrestling match. It wasn't embarrassing, it was. if that makes any sense. Right. It looked like two men in a struggle. And two I'm older guys. Say it, older guys, yeah. Yeah. Samoa Joe does not get enough credit for that move that he invented. I've never seen it done before. 
when the wrestler gets up on the top rope with his back to him and dies off at him. And every time Samoa Joe's like, bitch, I'm out. Yep. I love that's one of my, he just walks. Well, no, I'm done. <laughs> Excellent move. And as far as I know, he's the originator of that. And the only one that does it that has ever done it. Yeah. Yeah. And he swerved me too. At the end of that match, I thought they were going to yes! shake hands. Yeah. yeah everything was yeah. going to be hunky dory. And they he were going to team the off. Bola. <laughs> it was great. The, the, and the, the, I, the saga's not finished. The we we bag on them. We bag on them enough, man. We bag and bag on them. But the camera work in that was great because Samoa Joe was screaming to see him punk. You've never been better than me. You're still not better than me. I was like, oh shit, yeah. this is great. And here came FTR, beat the hell up to make the save. Where are the face run-ins anymore? You don't see it very often. It's a no. throwback. I love it. Thank God they're mm -hmm. doing it. The guy who booked the first episode of Collision, they must have brought him back to book this episode of Collision. Any of you guys have any idea who that is? Does anyone have any inkling? I, I've been trying to look, and I wanted to find out because uh, my personal opinion is that it's somebody that's not young. I'm just going to say that. It's somebody that's been around the business for quite a few years and has either and or – Worked in one of the other big two before the WCW or WWF. That's just my you, opinion. I'll tell you what, it was mother. We can make it a contest. Fantastic. Hey, SCM brothers, you guys look this stuff, and we'll make it a contest to see who can find out is the booker of AEW Collision. And if, if, if I'll give you a prize from this room, which is full of shit, it's <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, but you'll get something cool. Uh, you know what? Here it is. We'll do a double plug. Anybody that can find out. You're going to get the book of the week, Rowdy, the Rowdy Rowdy Piper story written by his son and daughter. One of the best books ever, a thick one, too. Look at that thing right here. Any of you guys find out who it is? I will send it to you personally. Rowdy, woo! Peel back the layers of the onion, folks, and find out yeah. who the mystery booker is. I'm curious to know myself. Did you see Ricky Starks come out at the end of the show and give him the look when it was all said and done? The people yes. that need to go over who've been sidelined for years eating shit at AEW <laughs> have resurfaced and they're in the positions they should be in right now. Starks is a star. Powerhouse Hobbs is a star. Just look at the kid. And he should be a face. And he's turned face by dumping out QT last night on, on collision. They're, they're, they're putting the people that they have in the right spot. Andrade, if you'll notice, Andrade cut a promo. Yeah. Mr. Charlotte Flair cut a promo. A good one. A damn good one. Damn good one. Yes. Damn good one. He even said on Twitter that he loves Collision. He wants to stay on Collision. He loves the locker room there. Everybody's supportive. He loves the people that run the show. And it's a whole different ball game from AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night. A Malachi Black, who uh, who came out and said, "Hey, I want to stay on Collision. We want the House of Black strictly on Collision, and hopefully, I haven't seen him on Dynamite, but hopefully they they adhere to that because it's a great spot for him. He's an old school guy, uh, uh, even though he looks like a new school guy. He's crazy look, but he." Loves the traditions of old school professional wrestling. Because is he Don? Is he Belgium? Is he from Belgium? Is he from Denmark? I really don't know. I'll have to look that up. I have to look that up too. I have no yeah, idea. I thought look. he was from Cleveland, but I could <laughs> be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Ken. Let me look it up. Oh, he's from Ken's Cock in Ohio. That's where he's there from. it is. Yeah. So, last piece I got today, I don't know if you guys know who Chris Van Valet is, but he's got a pretty good show. He interviews a lot of people on uh, he does. In, the, in the wrestling world, and he had Meltzer on and <laughs> absolutely took him to the woodshed about his bullshit reviews. And I'm going to say this much. He's given Japan like 59 or 60 five-star matches. The WWF has gotten like eight. If you're going to sit here and try to tell me that Dave Meltzer doesn't have a bias Kiss my big round rear. I'm done with this guy. He's a he's he is literally the epitome of a wrestling <laughs> douche canoe up shit stream. That guy has to kiss my ass. His opinions are junk. He gets these marks to pay five dollars a month. 
to hear his opinion. He's never won one show in his life. I'm tired of these AEW fans using him as a point of reference for any damn thing in the wrestling community. He knows shit about shit when it comes to what actually puts asses in seats. Because if New Japan was so damn great, they'd be in the state selling out auditoriums. But you know what? They're on Access Cable where they draw 59,000 viewers. Shut your face. Know your role, Dave Meltzer. Um, since you pulled the Deuce Canoe card, I can't disagree with you one freaking bit about where Meltzer's head is nowadays. I it's mean, up Tony Khan's ass. That's it, where he says that. You're damn right. It's up Tony Khan's ass because some of these five star matches uh, that he gives nowadays, it's 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 like just hey, everybody gets a trophy. Yay, we all participate. Hey, you win. You're the great. No, man, that's that's not how it works. Back in our day, five star match, Steamboat Flair, huh? Man. Right? Boom. There's one right there. I could name several. Shawn Michaels, uh, Razor Ramon ladder match. There it I is. Mean, five star match right there. But then he gives some of these other ones with like Omega versus what was that? Tenta for five stars? No freaking way. You know, he's and, you know, one of my idols, Mr. Jim Cornette, uh, listen to his podcast dearly. Uh, he said it many times before. And so is Brian last. The man is off his meds. He is off his medication or something because they all used to be buddies. And all of a sudden he just turned now. Everything's a five star match. And if he's going to do Japanese matches, five star. And Don, how many did he give WWE? It was like 59. And then there was like eight WWE matches that got his top scores. It, and there was like five AEW matches or six that had the same scores. His entire system is nothing more than his favorites and the guys that give him access. And if he's not exposed by now, if these people don't realize by now, this guy is the epitome of a 1920s carny. Asking you to come in and watch yep. the geeks bite the heads off of chickens. I can't help you. <laughs> hey, in the immortal words of Farmer Ted from the movie Sixteen Candles, I'm at a loss for words. I, I can't I can't say what he's doing. I just I, I don't know what to say about Dave. He's just not the same entity anymore. Bottles, what do you got on Mr. Meltzer? I think Mr. Meltzer has Asperger's syndrome. He's definitely I really do. Both. I think he's on the spectrum of autism. I really do. No offense well, to people out there who do have it, because a lot of them live functioning lives. And Dave yeah. Meltzer is a functioning Asperger's syndrome uh, uh, person. Uh, he's a wrestling agree with that. for the history. If you want to talk to, about the history of professional wrestling with Dave Meltzer over a couple of cocktails, you be there for hours and hours and hours. He's a genius when it comes to that. You can tell by the biographies he writes in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter when someone dies. He knows every facet of their life. He digs it up, and he's good at that. The current landscape, he's getting a paycheck from AEW. Yes. For PR. Yep. The whole website is. Everybody on that payroll is. Jim Valley and I, Jim Valley hosts a podcast on WrestlingObserver.com. Jim Valley has a lot of health issues. He's in line right now to get a kidney, I believe. Good, for Jim, I hope. If he's never, he'll never see this podcast because he probably hates me and he hates our point of view because he's one of those Japanese Porisu wrestling guys. He's a mark. He loves that stuff. He's a mark for that shit. He said, what's the kid's name? And um, the kid in, he's in the Blackpool Combat Club now. I can't Alex. pronounce this shit anyway. Kanashuki. Yep. Yep. That's it. Take That's a shit on. Take a shit on, as Cornette says. He said he's glad take a shit aside with AEW because he's full of charisma. He's a charisma machine. And I said to Jim, Jim, he's got the charisma of a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> he's got no charisma whatsoever. What are you talking about? He can't even speak English. He can't cut a promo. That's why he got callous with him because he can't talk. You can't talk. And he says, what, what, I, I, you, you, I can't believe you said that. You're not seeing it because you're biased, blah, blah, blah. I said, no, Jim, enjoy those paychecks you're getting from AEW. Thank you very much. And he didn't block me, though. He kept on coming after me. And I love guys like that, the fight mm -hmm. with on Twitter, as you guys can attest to. But yes, I did sir. go around and around with Jim Valley for a while, and I let him go. A J Jim Wheezy Valley, because if you ever heard him talk, He's, he's Weezer. He's got a set of pipes on him, let me tell you. He's got a voice for TV, not for radio. 
or not for podcasts. But uh, anyway, I, I, I want to rag on Jim Valley. I'm sure he's got a lot of health issues. He loves wrestling. He, um, he, all he could talk to me about what I was trying to dispute that take a shit. I had no charisma. He was talking about his Twitter engagement. How many people agreed with his tweet? How many people loved it? How many people retweeted it? I said, I don't give a shit about your engagement. He, and he said, the, says the guy with, I think I had at the time, 60 followers. I said, I don't give a shit about followers. Who cares about that? I'm just the one here to talk wrestling and politics to people and music and we're whatever, pop culture, the people on Twitter. And if Amen. they disagree with me, who gives a shit? I don't care. Let them disagree with me. I don't care how many people liked it or clicked on it or saw it or blocked me or muted me. I said what I said. Everybody's got an opinion. Just like we have opinions in this. You may not agree with what we're saying in this podcast. That doesn't mean, doesn't mean we're all going to fight about it. That doesn't mean we're going right. to give the blows, verbal jabs, or try to dox somebody on Twitter or anything like that. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to go to Don's house and jump in the pool when it's hot enough. Yeah. Don, I swear to God, I just saw Bigfoot go through your backyard there, dude. Someone's going to have to watch that about two minutes ago. That was awesome. A Sasquatch? Yeah, it looked like a Sasquatch. <laughs> was, it, was it a person or a dog? It was kind of shook. It was tech It was shit either up. a hella hairy hippie or it was Bigfoot. It Don, was take us home. Are we done? No, no, no. I got one more thing. To Are say. we out? I want to say thanks to everybody that's been supporting us so far, man. Uh, great sponsor, St. Pete Rejuvenate, CultivateWellness.com. I appreciate all the love. Uh, appreciate everybody that's been watching the shows, man. We really do. We're trying to improve this thing on a weekly basis. You know, love you guys. Larry, all the guys out there, Jason, good. Gil, Gil, I hope uh, <laughs> I hope you're not out there throttling somebody on Twitter right now. <laughs> Gil the Hammer, yep, yep, yep. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look one second right now. Let's take a look with uh, what are we doing? Hang on. What happened to the dog? Is it coming through? I got nothing. I see something. See. There it is. This is St. There we Pete go. Rejuvenate. There it is. Rejuvenate your wellness and med spa. St. Pete Rejuvenate. Right down in St. Petersburg, Florida. With over 25 years experience and a medical and anesthesia field, you can rest assured that you're in good hands. They offer ketamine therapy. Oh, they have an offer. Save 20% off on your first treatment. Enter the IV hydration giveaway. You can do that Ooh. on our website as a customer there. They offer ketamine therapy, IV hydration, aesthetics, and weight loss. If you have a problem with that, we are here to help you. St. Pete Rejuvenate is owned and operated by a certified registered nurse, anesthetist, and retired neurologist. You like those words? I've been reading again. Our ambition is to provide services that help you succeed in your goals. Hey, somebody get Dave Meltzer a gift card to this son of a gun because he needs it. Yeah, you're damn right about that, Don. He could definitely use that place, man. You know, do they also do lobotomies there? Because <laughs> Dave, he's one of those too. They'll take your brain out, Dave, and spin it around and put it back in for you. No, I just need him to take it out of his ass. <laughs> they can do that too. They can do that also. St. Pete Rejuvenate, if you're in the St. Petersburg, Florida area, we're at 2191 Ninth Avenue North, Suite 280, St. Petersburg, Florida. Or call 727-739-5543 if you've got a question. Call them or text them, and they will get back to you. Have no problems with that there. And let's take a look at our other sponsor. And you know this all too. Well, Cultivate Wellness. They even do free shipping. Cultivate Wellness is a CBD um, a, a business. It's a CBD store. With an entire product catalog of topicals, edibles, tinctures, pet care, capsules, and supplements, I give my dogs CBD and hemp treats during thunderstorms. Uh, I really used a lot of that during the uh, 4th of July fireworks because, you know, dogs hate fireworks. And they were all going crazy and whining and all that. And you give them some hemp treats, you give them some CBG treats, and it calms them down, if not puts them to sleep for a little bit while the fireworks and all the noise is going on. Works fantastic. Uh, they're local since 1999, down in Virginia, down in somebody's neck of the woods. Midlothian, baby. Down in, uh, what is it What is it again, Don? Midlothian. 
They also have a North Carolina location also. The Snoozy CBD Sleep Gummies, a lot of people swear by, totally organic, 10 milligrams of CBD, 2.5 milligrams of melatonin, and 50 milligrams of L-theanine. Take a 30 to 45 minutes before you go to bed for better sleep. My wife actually swears by this, the CBD and the melatonin, for taking a little snooze before you go to bed. They've got gummies. They've got hemp smokes. If you want to smoke some hemp, they've got it right there at a cigarette style pack. They've got the candy lollipops. They've got the tinctures you drop underneath your tongue. Midlothian Turnpike, Midlothian, Virginia. They're open Boom. from uh, 10 to 7. They're open tonight until 6. And Check they're them also out. open at Lake Gaston down in North Carolina. Call them. They do shipping. If you buy a certain amount, they will give you free shipping. Uh, let's Far see. out, man. Far out, man. If you Don, want to, uh, take us to the promised land. That's all I got, man. Love you guys. Appreciate the support. See you next week. Peace out. SEM Brothers, everybody. Total Pole. Take care.